Ladies and gentlemen, our program will begin in just a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, our program will begin in just a moment. Good day. Welcome to Advocacy Anywhere, powered by AJC. Advocacy Anywhere is AJC's digital platform that enables you to engage with AJC's global expertise, content, and advocacy from wherever you are. Today's program is brought to you in partnership with Jewish Insider. You can sign up for Jewish Insider's daily kickoff by visiting www.jewishinsider.com. The United Nations historic report last year on anti-Semitism okay. contains several sure. recommendations to meet the rising global threat, including the appointment of a senior level UN focal point on anti-Semitism. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres followed through and has now tapped Miguel Moratinos, High Representative for the UN Alliance of Civilizations and former Foreign Minister of Spain to assume that critical portfolio. We're delighted to be joined today by High Representative Moratinos, who in his first public appearance in his new role, will discuss the many challenges of combating the world's oldest hatred and his plans to address them. Moderating today's conversation will be Jason Isaacson, AJC Chief Policy and Political Affairs Officer. After we hear from Jason and High Representative, Representative Moratinos, we will take your questions. You may email your question to questions at ajc.org, questions is plural, or use the Q&A feature in Zoom. Jason, you and our esteemed guests have the floor. Daniel, thank you very much. Um, thank you all for joining today's Advocacy Anywhere program on a potentially powerful new instrument to combat the global rise of anti-Semitism, the designation by the United Nations Secretary General of a seasoned international figure to assume the lead role for the world body in monitoring and developing tools to respond to this insidious phenomenon. As you've just heard, we're fortunate to be able to feature that veteran diplomat, Miguel Martinez, High Representative for the UN Alliance of Civilizations and the former Foreign Minister of Spain in his first public program as UN Focal Point on Antisemitism. I wanna point out that High Representative Moratinos is a longtime friend of AJC, whom we first came to know in the 1990s when he served as the European Union's Middle East envoy, and on whom we bestowed our Jan Karski Award at the 2010 AJC Global Forum in Washington in recognition of his role in Spain's efforts against anti-Semitism. High Representative Moratinos, we are so pleased to host this first public discussion with you as UN Focal Point on Antisemitism, a post that AJC and our Jacob Blaustein Institute for the Advancement of Human Rights prioritized and recommended in consultations with the UN Special Rapporteur on Freedom of Religion or Belief and with the Office of the Secretary General. We have high hopes for your success in this important position. Now, I have several questions that I would like to pose to you and after which we'll open our discussion to questions from our viewers. But before we begin, allow me first to thank you for taking the time to be with AJC today. Well, I have to thank you, uh, Jason, my dear friend, and I have to thank you, AGC, American Jewish Committee, you know, we are all partners, all friends, we've been working together. I have uh, a strong uh, recognition how American Jewish Committee support my mission during my time in the Middle East and trying to find a positive outcome between Israel and Arab conflict and Israeli-Palestinian. Uh, during my time as Foreign Minister of Spain, uh, I remember every year going to New York, uh, having your guidance, your sometimes criticism, but uh, giving me the chance to really uh, understand better why you were so much engaged in order to find a way to fight against anti-Semitism and trying also to uh, facilitate a better outcome on the Middle East problem and conflict. And uh, I have with your chairman, um, David Harry, a very good friendship and with yourself. Uh, so many uh, coffees, uh, dinner, lunch, uh, uh, <laughs> together. And, and now I'm, I have uh, this privilege, thank to you, uh, to address this uh, the webinar in order to really try to clarify, not clarify, but uh, to explain why Secretary General uh, Antonio Guterres that has been from uh, his uh, one day, num day one, uh, the one who was uh, really committed to really fight against anti-Semitism, has took the decision to appoint me, designate me, to try to even 
increase in the efficiency in this fight, uh, this common fight we all have. And I hope that uh, from now on, I will give uh, you know, a positive answer, positive responses to this uh, challenge. No, I need your support, I need your guidance. And that I think this webinar will give us some elements in order to start to work immediately because uh, the issue is urgent, anti-Semitism is on the rise, unfortunately, in all around the world. So we need uh, to act immediately. And so um, there is no summer break, there is no time to waste. We have to immediately start to work, and and this webinar is the takeoff. I mean, is the you trigger the debate, you trigger you know the way we have to start to work together. And Miguel, you know that you can count on our support uh, consistently. Uh, we always have uh, looked forward to the prospect of working with you um, on these important issues, uh, whether it's Middle East peace or. Uh, or the fight against anti-Semitism, and we will continue to do so. By the way, before we get into the main subject of this conversation, I, I don't think that we can overlook the fact that just in the last few minutes, there was a very important announcement that the United Arab Emirates and Israel will move toward establishing full diplomatic relations, a remarkable achievement. You, as a former special envoy for the European Union on the Middle East, um, must take special pleasure in, uh, in, in seeing this important development. HAC has been working in this direction, as you know, for decades, and we're very satisfied and very excited about the prospect of uh, advancing peace between Israel and all of its Arab neighbors. Well, I think uh, just being uh, told by yourself this news, I think uh, uh, to avoid annexation uh, and part of the West Bank is a uh, good news in the sense that uh, if that is the way the Emirates has considered to normalize relations with Israel, I think it would. I was always in favor of the normalization process. I mean, uh, as a diplomacy, you need to normalize. Uh, when you have uh, uh, differences and uh, controversies, you have to come to uh, a normal relationship. And I think uh, uh, the time has come for going together, and that, I think, will help uh, to go back to the table, the negotiation table, the sooner the better. I really uh, would be delighted that the Israel and Palestinian will come back and start to go and to find a, a final settlement of this uh, long uh, conflict. Uh, is, we are coming closer to 100 years of conflict. So it's high time for the people have been working in, in order to achieve peace in the Middle East that we can have a good news. Uh, we are needed of good news. And I think that is the, uh, the best uh, uh, good news before we were supposed we were concerned that we'll get bad news. Well, that is a good news and we have to support it. Excellent. Well, thank you again. Um, so let me, uh, let's, let's plunge into the, the, the topic at hand. Um, uh, Miguel, there have been liaisons of the UN Secretary General to the Jewish community in the past, and there have been officials over the years who would speak from time to time on the issue of anti-Semitism. But since uh, Kofi Annan advisor Edward Mortimer more than a decade ago, there hasn't been a high level official tasked with the set of responsibilities that have now been assigned to you in monitoring and helping formulate responses to global anti Semitism. As we begin our discussion, please explain to our viewers the scope of your mandate and the Secretary General's and your expectations for this new role. Well, I was uh, telling you just uh, my um, introductory remarks, uh, Secretary General Antonio Guterres for day one was extremely uh, convinced and committed to fight against anti-Semitism. In all his speeches and all his intervention and the way he conducted the whole affairs, he was uh, always uh, at the top of the criticism of this, uh, this fight, so this anti-Semitism. So when he received um, uh, a letter from uh, 120 um, congressmen um, saying that they appreciate the, the attitude of uh, the UN, UN recently and the Secretary General in particular, but they were asking for having somebody that could uh, uh, lay, give, uh, you know, in daily basis in a much more intensive way the follow up and the monitoring of the uh, anti Semitism fight. And so he decided that I, uh, and the, the Alliance of Civilization, 
and taking my personal, I can imagine a personality and my characteristic, he thought I would be the person that could help to achieve the goal. The goal is to uh, have uh, two main objectives. Number one is to monitor. I mean, there is many monitor, there are I mean, many uh, centers, the Cantor Center in Tel Aviv University, or your own community, your own organization. Uh, I think um, uh, the Jewish community has been monitoring, but the, from the UN, there has been no a real monitoring uh, that can really identify how uh, this uh, anti-Semitism is expanding, is uh, growing, uh, and how we can reduce and how we can eliminate it. But the second and main important uh, mandate, element of the mandate is to take action within, uh, you know, the UN institution. So once we monitor and we come to the conclusion that still the need of engagement is still needed, well, I have to take action. The UN have to take action and I have to report to the Secretary General and to the different UN entities in order to really tell them that that has not been the appropriate contact and behavior and that we have to change and we have to modify. So these, these two fold uh, objective for monitor and action. So we have to monitor the situation and then to take action. I'm the one who are going to change the whole uh, situation. I, I think uh, my um, scope is going to be within the UN. And the UN of course have uh, this uh, important uh, let's say, uh, umbrella that is the universal mm, scope of the UN. And that I have to say that uh, mainly because um, till uh, now, the recent years, uh, anti-Semitism was much more uh, serious and uh, grave in uh, the United States and European um, continent or even Middle East, but today, my dear friend, as soon I have, we have to really enlarge the way we uh, conduct our fight against anti-Semitism. And I think uh, if you, one of the, let's say, negative experience of UN was Durban, for instance, no? in uh, South Africa uh, city. Well, uh, what I mean, uh, mention now Durban, I would mention later or maybe in the debate, but uh, is because in the Af in African countries, people were not aware of the, you know, the negative consequences of anti-Semitism. Or let's look at uh, Latin America, or let's look to Asia. Uh, so we have to lead to a larger scope and trying to understand why the UN have to intervene. And secondly, within the UN itself, we have to really I mean, uh, there is this uh, long history of um, uh, mistrust between uh, Jewish community, let's say also Israel and the UN. Well, let's, we have to put an end to that. We have to create a confidence between the uh, UN and the uh, Jewish communities and uh, in Israel. And we have to, um, give to the entities of the UN whatever they are going to produce a resolution of a declaration, um, the statement that they have to take into account whatever they are going to say or to write or to decide that is not anti-Semitic. So uh, uh, I think we can achieve that and that is my role. So I'm taking it seriously. It's one going to be one of my main concern and my main objective during my time as high, con high representative of the United Nations Alliance of Civilization. And I need, of course, the support, understanding, and, uh, and guidance from uh, Jewish communities that can help me in this endeavor. You know, you, um, you actually reference some issues that I was uh, hoping to, 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 to drill down further on uh, with your help, Miguel. Um, the UN's, let's say, uneven history in uh, dealing with anti-Semitism, uh, often quite disappointing history. Um, the first UN resolution referencing anti-Semitism 
didn't even appear until 1998, more than half century after the founding of the world body. Um, you, uh, the Zionism racism uh, resolution, resolution 3379, um, wasn't rescinded until 1991. Uh, next summer will mark the 20th anniversary of the Durban conference that you're referencing with that notorious NGO forum that um, characterized Israel as a racist apartheid state. So there's against that background, against that history, um, and, and recognizing there's a, there's a great deal more to be done, uh, your, your appointment and the report uh, last fall by Dr. Shahid uh, and, and the very strong commitment from the Secretary General suggests the changes are, are underway. Uh, what brought about those changes? Why, why has this important world body moved in a significant direction now, this significant direction? I think uh, it's true historically, different uh, historical contexts. Uh, we go back to the 70 uh, years or even 80s and even the 19s. And, and we have to wait, I have to be frank with you. We have to wait to 2015, more or less, or 2010, to see a shift within the UN system. And I think there is two, two elements. First even with uh, some difficulties from um, the Israeli diplomacy to understand that it's better to be in than to be out, that even if there is a difficult uh, environment, you have to fight, you have to explain your position. And I think that has been done during the recent years more strongly. And they have to really uh, make um, recognition of the uh, Israeli ambassador that had been uh, uh, fighting within the UN to defend our position. And the Jewish community, yourself, American Jewish community, you've been uh, very instrumental to explain to member states what is the reality, what is the concern, what are the threats and challenges of anti-Semitism. And, and, and I think also the whole change in international um, context. I think now people understand better uh, the, what is... Uh, as our friend uh, uh, Admiral Sahid say, is a uh, toxic, um, you know, uh, uh, element of anti-Semitism. You know, it's a, a toxic concept and that we have to really eradicate it. So for, because, uh, well, we talk about racism, but uh, well, the beginning of everything was racism against Jews. So we have to really understand that uh, it's, uh, we uh, have to be part of the top of the agenda. And uh, I think uh, at this, uh, this time, the uh, Secretary General himself, on his, uh, the leadership of the UN, I can see uh, all my colleagues at the top uh, post of the UN, they are all, I mean, uh, very much engaged and committed. And you have succeeded to call for uh, different conferences of the UN General Assembly on uh, anti-Semitism. Um, there has been uh, several attempts. I was thinking myself now that maybe the time has come, not maybe next year, but we have to really uh, work together to really convene a new conference of uh, uh, understanding the new, what we can call the new anti-Semitism that is even more serious and more dangerous than the traditional one that is still there, that we know how it reacts, but is more perverse today, the one who is uh, introducing in our mind and heart of people, fanatic of uh, uh, supremacists and other, and uh, uh, some uh, Islamic radicalism, you know. So we have to review the way we can be much more efficient with the new anti-Semitism that is going on around. So, so maybe the time has come to, uh, demonstrate that the UN is uh, on the leading side, trying to be um, uh, the one who can really uh, gather all the forces, all the group of the institution that are ready to fight against anti-Semitism. So um, uh, Durhan was uh, not started, but myself, I was uh, now preparing something about Racism, you know, and so racism uh, is going to be one of the issues that today we have to, to, to deal. And how we are going to accept a, a, a kind of resolution as it was in Europe, impossible. 
I will not, uh, UN will not allow that, will not accept that, you know? So, so maybe the time has come. And for that, as I was telling you, instead of course, we are going to work with the European friends, with the American friends, with the constituencies that are being much more, uh, let's say, um, link or, or engage in this fight against, uh, against anti-Semitism, but let's also um, go to Africa. Let's go to go to Latin America and explain them. Let them be with us in this fight. No, we need that. And in, in, in South Africa, the Israeli delegation or some uh, group of uh, Europeans were isolated. There were no way not to unblock this uh, negative attitude of, of, the, of the people who vote for this resolution. For today, I think uh, the world has changed and we have to go together in order to... That would be so encouraging and so refreshing. Uh, you, you froze there for a moment, Miguel. Let's uh, hope you can come back on shortly. Yep, you're back. Okay. The wonders of Zoom. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay now. Yes, it's okay, no? Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. But let me, let me pick up. Um, uh, let's focus on, on, on your mandate within, within the UN itself, insofar as your responsibilities include enhancing the UN's system-wide response to anti-Semitism. Uh, in your new post, do you expect to engage with UN member state officials if they make an anti-Semitic statement, um, or if habitual criticism of Israel in the world body strays into language that is essentially anti-Semitic. Uh, do you foresee the possibility of establishing training programs or guidelines for UN officials and staff so that they can recognize anti-Semitic statements or actions when they take place? Yes, I mean, before I get, I get in this uh, designation, I, uh, I remember, I think was my, my first uh, public appearance in New York, it was in uh, January, 27 uh, or 22, because it was before in, in East uh, Park Synagogue with our friend uh, uh, Rabbi Snyder. Uh, he invited us for the Holocaust Remembrance Day, you know? And, mm -hmm. and I, they invite me to take the floor as a high representative of the United Nations Alliance of Civilization. I say, I announced, and I did, that I will uh, send a letter to all member states in order to introduce in their legislation in their system on uh, this uh, Holocaust Remembrance Day, you know. I, I introduced myself when I was foreign minister of Spain in, in, uh, in, in Spain for the 27th of January. And I asked all my members of the group of friends of the Alliance to introduce this uh, Remembrance Day. Uh, that's an example that what we can do within the UINOSC. We have, of course, to train the people uh, to change through education, the his history manuals, education system, in order that hate and, you know, incitement uh, can disappear, that this uh, any neg negationist attitude can be, uh, should be totally eradicated. So there is a lot of work. And, and for that, I think the UNOAC have the tool. We have the instrument, we have the people, and we have... Uh, well, you know, the, the, the means to really achieve that. I mean, we cannot change uh, overnight, but I think uh, a program will be announced in order that we can uh, have a concrete, uh, a specific project that can reply to this uh, need that are of course uh, essential if we want to be successful in this fight against anti-Semitism. Uh, Miguel, I have just one or two other questions before we uh, open it up to our viewers, but um, I wanted to ask you, when, when, when you accepted the Jan Karski Award uh, from AJC a decade ago, you told us, and I'm quoting you, um, it is a moral responsibility to fight not just traditional anti-Semitism, but the new form of anti-Semitism, which is even more perverse. And this was in the context, uh, looking back at that period, of an alarming spike in anti-Semitic incidents uh, that were taking place in Europe, often associated with denunciations of Israel. More recently, uh, Secretary General Guterres has been quoted as saying that anti-Semitism often expresses itself, and I'm quoting him now, quote, in attempts to delegitimize the right of Israel to exist, including calls for its destruction using the pretext of the situation in the Middle East to target Jews and Jewish symbols. 
what, what is your view on the link between anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism? And do you expect the IHRA working definition of anti-Semitism to play a role in carrying out your new responsibilities? Well, I think this, uh, this uh, dilemma has been solved in the attempt to define um, anti-Semitism. Now, I think uh, the International Holocaust uh, Remembrance Alliance, no? the Declaration of Bucharest in 2016, uh, give uh, you know, the sense of what have to be the case. I think uh, uh, Zionism, I mean, uh, everybody, we are a friend of Israel. Uh, we are defending the state of Israel. But sometimes, of course, uh, myself, when I was in U.S. Special Envoy, or even now, if I think there is some uh, um, situation that I don't disagree, I, I, I kind of disagree with the attitude. But it doesn't mean that we are going to disagree with Israel because it's a, a Jewish state, etc. You know, I mean, we are not linking the element of Jewish community with Israel. I mean, I will criticize Israel, I can criticize another state in, in the same term, but no more, no less, you know. So we have to be, I mean, uh, to be very clear about that. I think uh, one of my mission will be to really have this definition has been adopted in Bucharest and how we can uh, enlarge the people and the country that will support it and how we can um, enrich it or we can really enlighten it. Uh, I think we have to get a consensus about it. I think now there are 30 states that are defending the declaration when we need that to enlarge it. Let's let to discuss it. So let's go to call for a kind of meeting and to put all elements and to discuss in a positive and let's say uh, um, attitude, positive attitude in order to get a, a common definition of anti-Semitism that will uh, preserve this uh, permanent dilemma between uh, anti-Zionism and anti-Semitism. Very good. Well, and of course, Dr. Shahid uh, was fully endorsing uh, the concept of, uh, of embracing that. Absolutely, that absolutely. Uh, yes. let, me, let me ask a, a final question for now before opening it to the floor. Uh, from, from decades of confronting the issue of anti-Semitism, along with other issues of intolerance and bigotry, what have struck you as the most effective countermeasures, um, educational or faith-based programs, experiences that highlight the beauty and the benefits of diversity, hate speech controls and other legal or technical instruments, um, the behavior of national leaders, um, adopting the working definition. What, 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 what combination of, of remedies are you, um, are you looking at and, and, and would, you, would you support? I think now the, the main uh, challenge we have, we all have, uh, because the, uh, the classic anti-Semitism or well, the dramatic anti-Semitism that the Jewish community have suffered throughout history is still there. But I think what is now coming to us is this uh, hate attitude, you know? Now, uh, Jews are not uh, in certain areas like Europe or not, they are not persecuted like in the past, they are not, but they are hate. There is hate against the Jewish community and the Jewish people. And that's hate speech or hate attitude is what we have to re-eliminate, you know, and that is much more complicated. So through education program, uh, through some, um, let's say, uh, social network that can be controlled, can be, do you not know, regulate it, I think we should try to uh, enrich and uh, improve our tools in order to improve the situation. Because uh, hate is introducing your mind, you know, it's, it's in your heart, it's more difficult to eradicate hate, you know? Because sometimes you are brutal with some, your adversary of your counterpart, but you don't hate him, you don't hate them. The problem now with anti-Semitism and Jewish community that a lot of people, they're frustrated, and they consider that um, the Jewish are this uh, conspiracy theory, no? Uh, you are the one who have the fault of everything, that everything is due to the Jewish uh, responsibility. So there is a kind of 
uh, attitude of hate. No, why the world is so go so bad? It because of the Jewish. No, so that's what we have to to really eliminate and demonstrate that uh, everybody can contribute in a positive term. And of course, the Jewish community and Jews and Israel and all, all have been one of the most outstanding uh, creat creators and producer of uh, uh, science, technology, uh, literature, um, well-being. So uh, no, it's not the contrary. So we have really to invert and to eliminate this hate, uh, hate attitude that is, I uh, think, from my point of view, going around uh, in a very perverse manner. There you go. Thank you. I think at this point, uh, let's open it up to uh, to, to the viewers. Uh, Daniel. Thank you. Thank you, Jason, and thank you, High Representative Moratinos. Our first question comes from Dale Householder in Wisconsin, who asks: Many American Jews have not seen the UN as a friend on issues related to Israel and anti-Semitism. Obviously. It is pleasing to see this movement on this issue, but can you explain how your work will make life better for Jews around the world in a practical way? Well, I think, uh, as I was telling before, uh, the UN had been uh, not uh, very well perceived by the majority of Jewish people and, uh, and by the Israeli government in general. And, uh, and we have to say that if we look uh, uh, carefully, we have to understand there are some been some important events uh, thanks to the UN and that have, uh, of course, benefit Israel and the Jewish community. Not only to say the resolution 180 or 1947, the creation of the state of Israel. Uh, we have to say that uh, even uh, recently, as I was telling you before, uh, the ambassador. Danny Danone was elected chairman of the UN, UN General Assembly on the Sixth Committee to discuss legal issue, or Professor Jude Balshani that has been also appointed chairman of UN Human Rights Committee, an independent body of the UN, of uh, that Israel has uh, well uh, facilitated this uh, different um, UN General Assembly meeting uh, on, on anti-Semitism. So there is a, a, a new change. And what we have to do now is to really get this new dynamic, this new tendency in order to be more practical. As I was telling you, we have to be practical that not a single resolution that comes out of the UN system have any anti-Semitic element. And we have to really verify that. You know, we have to be at the beginning, any draft resolution, any proposal, have not to contain any anti-Semitic element. And like that, we will create a better understanding and we will be able really to fight together in different areas and, 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 and position. Daniel? Thank you. Our next question comes from Richard Plotzker via Zoom, who asks, AJC recently held programs with US Special Envoy Elon Carr, Lord John Mann in the U United Kingdom and other representatives focusing on anti-Semitism in their respective countries. Do you plan to partner with experts like these from individual UN member states? Of course, I mean, uh, it's my way has been working all my life. I mean, um, a man has been uh, uh, being in touch with all the uh, person that have something to uh, contribute, something to give uh, in order to facilitate a better result. Uh, so, of course, I already received some uh, um, recommendation and some uh, element from Germany, from the United States, uh, from uh, uh, French uh, uh, authorities. So I'm ready to work with member states. And uh, I'm, uh, of course, uh, open to, to work with all of them in order that they can give me uh, what are their concern, what are their proposal, what are you know, the best uh, solution they can offer, in order that at the end of the day, uh, in one, two years, we can say, well, together we, we, we made a, a better work. Thank you, Miguel. Daniel, other question? Yeah, uh, along those same lines, we have a question from Julia Feinstein in Washington, D.C., who asked, I was so pleased that you were appointed as focal point on anti-Semitism and know that the US Congress had reached out to the Secretary General about the need for this position. 
do you think that Congress, the U.S. Congress, can be a partner for you as you move forward in this mandate, and how can they be helpful? Well, I think it's uh, fundamental. U.S. Congress, uh, I mean, uh, needless to say, no, it's, uh, it's a political uh, platform, fantastic political platform where you can really establish uh, policies and then uh, policies as an example for other uh, parliamentarians, other parliaments in, around the world, uh, because uh, I think uh, if the U.S. is leading in this fight, I think uh, it's more easy for me and for other to follow, you know, the, the recommendations that have been taken by the U.S. And so uh, I'm uh, unfortunately with this COVID-19, we were supposed to have a, a informal meeting with some of the, let's say, uh, group of uh, important uh, congressmen in order that we can really established to identify the main um, objective and the main immediate action that we should start to talk to take. And so I'm waiting for, I hope uh, after September, but we could really meet together. If we cannot do by uh, presential and face-to-face, -face, let's do like today through a webinar. But uh, of course we are ready for that. And, and I think I'm, um, uh, for me, that's what the beginning of this uh, new designation. And I think uh, we are very much uh, in favor of working together with the U.S. Congress. Very good. Daniel? Your next question comes from Larry Kleiner in Brooklyn, New York, who asks, there are three different forms of anti-Semitism that from the right, from the left, and from radical Muslims. What can the U.N. do to fight all three? Are there specific approaches that can be taken in your position? Well, again, I repeat myself. I think uh, the UN, uh, my mission is going to be to monitor, you know. Of course, I will benefit from all kind of uh, reports or the studies that are going to come to the UN system. But more important for me is to really uh, be the one who will uh, uh, verify and uh, let me uh, time to control that uh, within the UN system there is no any any ne negative uh, you know, attitude towards anti-Semitism. So, uh, well, there will be a positive attitude against anti-Semitism in, in the sense that we will fight together and that we will not allow the UN really to be part of that. So I think that is my main uh, uh, target and my main mission to really uh, be able really to mobilize all the UN system in favor of this fight. Thank you. Uh, 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 go, go ahead, ahead Jason. Yeah. No, no, I was going to turn it over to you, Daniel. <laughs> Our next question comes from Lori Steiner in St. Louis. Are there any nations or political leaders that have really demonstrated true leadership in the fight against anti-Semitism? And in your opinion, what does that type of leadership look like? Well, there has been many, many leaders. I cannot, I uh, mean, immediately say, but I, I have to say that for instance, uh, uh, Secretary General Antonio Guterres has been uh, one of the most uh, prominent uh, leaders that is uh, uh, telling, uh, in all occasion, and telling me when I was appointed that I have to take care of this fight as one of my priority as a high representative of the United Nations Alliance of Civilization. Of course, uh, uh, during uh, history, there have been many. Uh, I cannot now mention some of them, but uh, either in France or in UK or in Germany, uh, I mean, uh, Chancellor Merkel or, or whoever, I mean, has been very much active. And the United States, I think, um, practically all president has been, of course, uh, taking this issue as one of the main priority of the mandate. So I think... Uh, what we need, of course, is leadership, uh, but not a single leadership. What we need is a collective leadership uh, in order to fight anti-Semitism. Uh, so that is what the, the UN is uh, concerned. I mean, uh, we are uh, uh, 193 countries, uh, and these 193 countries represent the, the whole humanity. 
And so the, this humanity has to be aware of what has happened to the Jewish people. And that has to be aware of the consequences not to fight against anti-Semitism. So my work is uh, to gather and to have this collective leadership in order to fight anti-Semitism in a much more efficient way than till now. Uh, Daniel, before you pose the next question, let me just um, ask uh, just kind of a bureaucratic um, organizational uh, question for you. Uh, how, how does your role as focal point on anti-Semitism work with or conflict with or overlap with the role of Dr. Ahmed Shahid, who wrote this uh, historic report last fall uh, on, uh, on anti-Semitism, the first uh, volume, first document of its, of its kind in the UN's history. Uh, he is the Special Rapporteur for Freedom of Religion or Belief. There's also the UN Human Rights Council. Um, are, are, your, are your jurisdictions overlapping or do you have a very distinct role? No, I think it's not. I mean, we have to, uh, to uh, get used to this complexity in, in today's world in all areas of uh, science, of uh, uh, social activities, etc. And the UN, UN is the same. I mean, uh, my friend Ahmed Sahid has a very concrete mandate. Uh, he's the rapporteur for freedom of religion and belief. He made a fantastic report, as you said. Uh, uh, it's a fantastic uh, uh, document that has inspired all of us. And he's going to inspire my work. No? But uh, he has, of course, more link with the human rights uh, Area of the UN system. I'm the one who, as uh, the designation is uh, mentioned in the letter of Secretary General to the Congressman and, and, and Congresswoman, is that I have to monitor and to well take action within the UN system. So um, I would say that I have to gather and try to work. I will, uh, we have a very good relation between ATMED and myself, so we understand each other. And I think we have to work in certain areas together and others I have to take my own responsibility. But I don't think it's going to overlap, uh, on the contrary. You know, uh, in the UN, as well, in any kind of organization, the important thing is to understand what is the added value of any kind of uh, new mission. Hmm? And so what is the added value of the decision of the Secretary General to appoint a focal point within the United Nations Alliance of Civilization. The added value is that I can reach out to all kinds of cultural civilization, countries, nations, and uh, in order that uh, this anti Semitism disappear. I mean, uh, we have no mentioned during this uh, conversation how Islamophobia is also a very serious problem in today's world, and how we have to understand and work and some occasion together between some Islamic organization and some uh, Jewish organization together. As you we know, have uh, very aggressively. As and, I think and, and you have been working together. So uh, instead of saying, well, we are, no, no, uh, what my experience during the last two years has been that I found in the majority of the religious leader and the religious representation and institution, a sense of uh, common ground, a sense of a common responsibility. So that is what I, is my added value because I can't really reach out better than the other. If you are of course only addressing one part of the problem, you are not able to give a, a much more a stronger solution to the to this problem. So, uh, without saying that I'm the one who can solve everything, on the contrary, I need partner, I need a, a friend, I need a, a different uh, interlocutors. Uh, we need uh, to work together. We have to start to work together. I mean, like is my motto for the alliance: living together. What we have to work together, and and that is, uh, I think, the added value that uh, this um, uh, focal point can do 
in order that uh, at least you know to whom to criticize or to whom to address your complaint or to whom you have to mobilize better. So because before you go and they go to the Human Rights Council and then you are not satisfied because sometimes there was no responding. And then you go to the secretariat and the secretariat have been well, so maybe the Secretary General come to a, a declaration, then you go to the General Assembly. So now you have a focal point, and you have a focal point where you can make your complaint or your, uh, uh, the, the, your position, your re requirement, whatever. And at least we have a, a, a channel of communication that is much better uh, organized than before. But that is my my intention, then we will see how we can uh, give a concrete result to this mission. Thank you. And, and by the way, I, I was interrupting you before to just point out that, of course, four years ago, HAC created in partnership with the Islamic uh, Society of North America, the Muslim Jewish Advisory Council. We have regional advisor, Muslim Jewish advisory councils across the country as well. We are very dated, dedicated to the proposition that you're putting forward, uh, the importance of Muslims and Jews to work together to solve uh, common problems um, and, and, and modeling, I think, some of what, what, what you've been trying to do in the Alliance of Civilizations. Daniel, next question. Thank you. Our next question comes from Peter Coe in Berlin. You've been a leader when it comes to the protection of Jewish heritage sites. Can you speak to how we are doing generally at honoring Jewish heritage, especially in places where Jewish population used to be much greater? And what big picture value do you see in promoting religious heritage and perhaps to your mandate now? Yes, I, I, I didn't mention before in my uh, introductory remark, but that was also, I think, one of the reasons why Secretary General uh, decided to uh, designate me as focal point, because you may recall that last year was an awful year, 2019 and 2018. Uh, unfortunately for the Jewish uh, uh, properties and the Jewish uh, religious site had been uh, many, many, many bad years. But for other religions, uh, suddenly there were attacks and there were uh, there was a violation of the site, etc. So Secretary General, after Greek Church, uh, decided to launch a global plan for safeguarding religious site. And he gave me the mandate to, to draw the plan. I draw the plan and we present the plan together with Secretary General uh, last year, the 12th of September in the UN. And so more or less one year since uh, the plan is uh, on, on, on practice. And we are working, of course, with uh, all the uh, main actors in order to implement it. And of course, with the Jewish community, I met a lot of uh, uh, Jewish uh, representation. And I think um, to, to say that you were, um, due to what you have suffered, and your own um, very dramatic experience, you were much better prepared than others, no? I mean, your synagogue, unfortunately, you had a tremendous experience recently, but you have taken your own measures in order to protect yourself. But of course, uh, that is part of my uh, mission. Uh, I think uh, um, the question uh, is, uh, uh, representation of uh, Germany that asking asking this question can be reassured. We are going to take care of the uh, Jewish uh, properties and uh, heritage, historical heritage, and we are uh, now trying to have a mapping of all the religious sites around the world of the special um, heritage uh, and properties. So, of course, uh, we are going to be the ones who. Uh, will promote in order that uh, governments and member states take certain measures in order to guarantee that these properties are well guaranteed, well protected, and they can be preserved. So that is part also of the mission. A, a daunting challenge, but so important. Uh, thank you, uh, Miguel. Uh, Daniel? Sure, I think we have time for just one other question. and. This comes from Ray Termini in Dallas, Texas, and it kind of goes back to the point we, were, we started with. He was asked, how do you think the normalization of diplomatic relations between the UAE and Israel 
will, will affect the rise of anti-Semitism among Muslims and, and others in the Middle East and in Europe. Will this make your job any easier when you, uh, when you get off of this call? Uh, as I said, I mean, uh, myself, I mean, uh, when I was a uh, US special envoy and then when I was, uh, well, even before becoming a US special envoy, when I was a young director general for Middle East Affairs, I participate in the normalization between uh, two Arab countries, uh, Tunisia and Mauritania. So I have, uh, in my memoirs, uh, you can recognize I participate in these negotiations. So from the beginning, I consider as a very clear position that uh, normalization uh, should be done. You know? Today, there is no uh, a reason why you don't normalize relations with Israel. The question is that uh, sometime the negotiation had been either, you know, hit hard by uh, some uh, uh, situation in the ground, certain difficulties, and, and so there has not been uh, the fear, the fear momentum for that. You know? So, but now we are in a critical moment for the people of uh, the Middle East. I think uh, never have seen the situation in the Middle East in such a very negative uh, situation um, due to many circumstances. So this uh, news of today is uh, the first positive news we have received. And I think uh, now, as I told you at the beginning, we need to really try to call for negotiation between the parties with uh, the support and the help and assistance of international community. International community, that means that uh, not only one party has been the one. That means that whoever can contribute, facilitate, help, assist the two sides to get a final settlement should be included. There is no more time of, uh, let's say, one party only, only the party. No, I think uh, the two sides have the, been the responsibility to get a deal, and then the rest of the world should to try to assist. And I think uh, Emirates, with this uh, this uh, decision, have tried to help the parties to get back to the table. And I hope that uh, that will be the sooner the better for everybody. Miguel, I think the um, motto of the UN Alliance for Civilizations is many cultures, one humanity. And, uh, and I think all, yes, of us, uh, all of us can, uh, can work uh, toward the goal that, uh, that you're just uh, spelling out. Daniel? So that, Jason, I'm actually gonna turn it back over to you. I think we're um, just nearing the end. Well, then I, then I will happily pick it up. And, and, and thank you, um, Miguel, for taking the time to be with us today. Um, we've um, known each other. Um, with David Harris and, and others uh, within AJC over many years, had many meetings on the issues that we're discussing now. Um, I'm so glad that we're meeting on a day when, uh, when there is finally good news from the Middle East, particularly after last week's horrible news from, uh, from Beirut. We haven't even had a chance to talk about, about that and its repercussions. But um, the portfolio that you're now taking on um, is, is a refreshing uh, shift um, for the world body and, um, and evidence that uh, perhaps we can, we can make some progress uh, from a very important platform uh, toward, um, uh, toward really confronting um, fully with the, the, the power and the voice of the United Nations, uh, this uh, pernicious uh, menace that uh, has afflicted our people for, uh, for thousands of years. But thank you, uh, Miguel, for taking the time to be with us uh, today. And, and, and we look forward to working with you as you move forward on your agenda. Uh, and, um, and I hope that at some point we'll actually see each other in person. Absolutely. Sure so, thank you. Uh, thank you, Daniel. Thank you for uh, the, the friends that uh, asked some question. And thank you, Jason, for your uh, conversation and your um, recommendation for the future mission of my my task as uh, focal point of the UN, and I, I again I I'm really uh, want to express my full commitment and my full determination to work with all of you, 
in order that we can achieve uh, better results. So uh, let's go to work and we'll be in touch and we'll be uh, meeting each other for sure. And uh, let's hope that um, uh, as I, the UNOSC said, we are living in a one humanity. It's high time that this one humanity live in peace uh, all around the world. So thank you very much. And, and I hope you, we can see you very soon uh, in New York or in Washington in order that we can continue our, our work. Thank you. Thank you, Miguel. Thank you, Daniel. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Yeah, thank you both for such a fascinating, important conversation. And thank you again, High Representative Martinez, for being with us today. We really appreciate you. your time. I would also like to thank our audience for joining us. If you enjoyed this program, please consider making a donation to AJC at ajc.org donate. Thank you, everyone, and goodbye. Bye. Bye-bye.